Okay, uh, good evening. I wish we had more people here, but I hope a lot of people view this. And our thanks to Connor McIver, who's our deputy town administrator, who's going to uh, run a film of this for further presentation. So we appreciate that. And um, again, what we would like to do is allow everyone in two or three minutes to present um, their particular view of the position they're running for. Um, I know in the past we've had an issue where someone on one position wants to comment on some other position, and maybe that's not quite what we want to hear. Um, but they certainly would be welcome to ask someone in the other position if that's really what they would like to do. But I think comments should be related to precisely what they are running for, um, probably uh, what they intend to accomplish or what they hope to avoid, either one. And um, again, I am sure that this small of an audience will be respectful and <coughs> let everyone have their piece. So with that, I'm going to go right in the order down the table and uh, allow uh, persons to speak and then see if we have any questions specific to what they have said. So Dan, your question. Um, Dan, Dan, um, in the past two years, I felt like we've done a lot in some small stuff. I look like we did a lot in some. I am computer illiterate. And we have a tech committee who brought a lot of new technology ahead and it's really helped things and stuff. And then there's a lot of new staff that are very good with the computers. And I love it for that. But that's not my personal favorite. And I respect people that have a stand to do with that. And then, two, we have three dilemmas. I, I like that. Library, the police station, and the town hall is on zone. And I feel we came together and did a good job of all three of them. Three of the tax base. So we'll see what happens on the 12th. We'll see that. Thank you. Thank you. Next, Danny. Danny Gap. Lower the mic. Sorry. Danny Gap, running the land as a second term for second term selectman. The past three years, we've made a lot of progress. We have improved technology in the town. We continue to drive the efficiency in the way in which we're working as a town. And um, we've better organized and straightened out a fair amount of budgetary items within um, some of the departments as well as in the um, staff compensation and uh, staff management. I think we're on the right track. Feedback seems to be pretty positive so far. We just intend to keep the momentum moving forward in a positive direction. Okay, so those are your persons for the select board. Anybody have any questions related to the select board? Yes, please. Sorry, I should have said that. Anyone wanting to speak should get to that mic. And I think Juan told me that mic also needs you to uh, put in your mouth. Yeah, it'd be real slow, but a couple of inches. That'd be great stuff, Doctor. Good evening. Uh, first of all, thanks for running. Good work. Yep. Uh, so I really have two questions. Uh, one is that there's been some concern uh, among some people in general, and I know that because I get that a lot from things uh, myself, about the transparency of government. So I'd like to have you address that question. Uh, and the second question is, what will happen differently in the next term? You know, regarding, you know, what you might do. Don't think you did that well in the last, you know, as a board, and how you might change that in the next reiteration, the next few years up. Great questions. And again, what I'd like is for Dan to respond to this. Um, the new town webpage, it's up. There's a lot of gifted people in there down all around. It's up. You get me on the web page, so. And Carl's uh, very good at computer um, savvy, and there's another person down there, and a lot of people down there, and that's a lot of information you get on the uh, web page now. And then we can live stream this. Continuing to, to from a transparency and uh, making sure that the videos are easily available and shareable and the meetings are easily available and shareable has been a big part of that between YouTube 
do an upgrade from the town technology so we actually could store, we have the capacity to actually store the documents. That was a big hurdle for us to overcome. Um, making sure that we're using uh, up-to-date technology for that sharing ability um, has been a big part of it, even so much that we're looking at some um, live stream cameras that better help us do that as opposed to having to record it and then upload it all. Um, the, the continued improvement with sharing agendas and making sure that the TA's agenda is available um, because a lot of the information for what's happening in the meeting often gets put into the TA's agenda and not is, is, is visible in the regular agenda. So making sure that that's out there and people know exactly what's being talked about as well as anybody that has um, a routine play, placement in the board and sharing what, what they're purposes, meetings, um, are basically select those reports in that case. Uh, so that's that's been a big part I think of where we move forward. Uh, it can it still needs to improve. I think there's a lot that we can do to make it better. Uh, how exactly we do that uh, I find the web page challenging to navigate if you don't know what you're looking for. So making the web page more functional uh, for anybody that's just coming to use it for exactly that purpose that if you're, if you're not a regular user of it and you don't know exactly where you're going, it's really difficult to find stuff on that page. Um, so that's where I think we can definitely continue to improve and we have every intention of improving. And then the last part of the question was, um, if you would mind just repeating it, it was just was it too so much there's no growing, you know, what would you do differently from following the end? I thought there was something else that you'd ask to follow in that part. Yeah. So yeah, that's that's what I think we can definitely be, be done to make it a better, a better process as we go forward. Did that satisfy your question? Yeah. Right. We'll move on to candidates for library trustee. My name is Lee Elliott, and I've been a library trustee now for five years. Um, I started out as an alternate trustee for two appointments. Those were one-year terms, and then was elected to a three-year term. And that is um, being completed right now. And I love the library. I love advocating for the library. I'm very passionate about uh, our, even our small space and how much we're able to do and serve in our town. And I want to continue that. And I also believe that we desperately need a new building. And I've spent a lot of time in the past year with a great team of people um, trying to organize funds and outreach for our new space, which will be a library and community center. So in my next um, time here as trustee, I'm going to work very hard to obtain that space. Hopefully it passes this year. but. If it does not, we're prepared to go forward and uh, I look forward to serving the town today. And again, with everyone's permission, I'd like to just do one block at a time so if Robert wants to see any questions to the library trustee can. Well, I'm Robert Drew, and I'm um, writing in this trustee, library. So I just, uh, just thinking back, yeah. this is the fifth term I've been a library trustee for 12 years. So I've seen several uh, attempts at different locations, different library plans, different presentations. I think this is the best one we've had so far. Um, the location and library design, and also the foundation, which we didn't have before, was done a lot to uh, get the community involved. Uh, I believe also in libraries, that's why I'm a library trustee. Um, a lot of people think it's not with it and you can get your information from the web or Google or something, but uh, we can't do everything. There's been several studies, the state did one, and, uh, different libraries have done uh, different programs to show the value of how many books that you check out. If you use a library now, stop and think. Next time you use the library, write down the average book that you take out, $5, $10, add that out, the videos you take out, uh, 
amount of time you're spending. There's a lot of seniors and other folks in town that don't have access to an internet line and their computer, so they can just use that. They're also going to have community spaces, uh, lots of organizations and groups that need a place to be in Barrington, and the library's going to be able to help with that. So I'd like to continue uh, fighting, reaching for the library, and continue to uh, work to uh, Library that the town deserves. Any questions from the library, Trustee Ken? Yes, sir, go ahead. Yes. I think 
Yeah. Okay, you made a mortgage payment to the I pay more if you I take the mortgage out of your I also pay part of the bar. We take care of the strike. We should, but we do. As I said earlier, I made a sizable contribution to the foundation. I made a sizable con contribution to the foundation. Thanks for coming. Thanks for okay, I did before. Thank you. Thank you for your question, Ken. Um, I think you speak for some of the people in town, so I appreciate you getting up. Um, as far as the need for a library and your thoughts in that we already have enough of a library and we don't need more, um, I would tend to disagree with you on that. The space that we do have right now is incredibly small. I'm not sure if you've been in recently. Um, it is not, it's not certainly not the size of the need for the town that we have now and the way that we're growing. Um, but more important than that, aside from the fact that you can get everything, or you can believe you can get everything online, um, having a space to congregate in town is vastly needed. Right now, the only space that is currently available is a small table at Caleb's, or you can go to a house of pizza, or possibly a gas station. We don't have a place for people to put together. Um, Small families have to bring every day in our library children's home. We also have meetings. Everything is done in the living room. If there's a meeting that needs to happen, the children are asked to leave. I don't believe that that's appropriate. I think the children should have a space all their own whenever they want it. And just because we're out of space doesn't mean that they should suffer. In terms of whether or not I should go uh, mortgage my house to the help, um, I, you know, I, I'm a working class family. I have a daughter in school. Um, we certainly wouldn't be able to fund the entire library, but I believe that it's a fair request. On an average, $300,000 home and the tax impact would be less than $10 a month. Um, and I, I do believe that's very fair for what we're willing or able to give the town now in decades into the future. Next question. Um, but that space can be divided into a one-third, two-thirds, or half and half. So 
you can have multiple activities going on, even after hours. I think that just, the possibilities are endless. And I'm really excited to offer it. Right now, I think, as you said, uh, some people use the internet and Google for their information, but a lot of people come to the library, not just for the books, not just for the story time for children, but as we said, just to me, um, just you know, a lot of houses aren't next door to each other like they are in the city, and people have to come out, and so they, they meet there, uh, and plan on other things. Uh, so there's a lot of use for a library uh, that people don't realize. Did that satisfy your question? Any other questions for the library trustees? Okay, moving on to the school board. Hi, I'm Laura Taylor. I'm seeking re-election to the school board. I've lived here in Barrington for almost 25 years. I no longer have children in the schools. My sons are both college age. Um, but I feel like my background in education is well suited for me to serve the town and capacity of serving on the school board, so that's why. Hello, my name is Karen My name is Karen Hill, and I'm running for election for the school board this year. Um, and I've been a American resident for the past eight years. I have three children, one um, who's currently in middle school, one in the elementary school, and next year my youngest will be at PCLC. And so it's very obvious that I'm a supporter of the school. And so, but uh, my path to school board was a lot more organic than just being a parent. So I uh, work at a small uh, business in town. I also am PTA president. I've been on the PTA for six years, president for two, and then was asked to stay on for another year. So three years next year. Um, and so I'm very familiar with doing a whole lot um, on very little. And so basically it's just being creative and I haven't been on the school board yet, so I can't help speak to a lot of the intricate details if you have any specific questions. But uh, part of being a volunteer in the schools, I was uh, asked and invited to consider being part of the advisory budget committee on the school board, and I happily accepted. This is my second year, and so, and I also attend basically almost every single school board meeting for the last three years that I could possibly get to. So it's a true passion of mine, and I believe being creative and open-minded listening to all voices of parents and also people that don't have children in the community. Uh, we're soon to become single income households, so tax impact is really important to me. And making sure that we listen to not just parents, but also the community as a whole. Uh, but I'm a huge supporter of our schools and maintain a really excellent quality education and safety for the children in our town. And I commit to doing as much work as possible to educate myself, listening to the community, Thank you. Yes, Ken. Ken Grant, uh, Parker Mountain Road, and uh, I am running for school board. I had before. Uh, I believe very much in a strong education, so much so that I think one of the primary important areas that is education can do is to make sure that students have a solid and thorough background understanding of our Constitution. That which would include the Declaration of Independence. Uh, if we don't understand how important it is to know that the Constitution is a, really the, the backbone of our country, the document that, that binds us together here, and that if we think that we can uh, water it down or uh, uh, somehow limit its, uh, its application to our lives, or we uh, I just think it's so important that our our education of our students includes a very strong background in understanding our country, our history, and uh, that uh, we could look forward that with that we're going to have a strong country. We are going to know that we have secure borders, secure language, secure culture. We don't we like other countries that have, have lost that? Uh, our country has the strongest best constitution and it uh, certainly has worked for us and it should continue to work for us to be supported. Uh, I look forward to be uh, participating on the school board and uh, if I were to say that there was transparency that could be improved upon, 
Um, I don't know why it's such a battle to have uh, teacher salaries and uh, compensation uh, listed in our town report. Our taxpayers are paying for this. Uh, we've got nearly a $25 million budget in our school system this, this upcoming proposed year. So I, I think it's important that that transparency includes all, all its benefits. Uh, you've been used in the past before there's some type of uh, barrier preventing uh, uh, salaries and compensation from being listed. I don't think that is applicable. I don't think that's anything that could be really stood on any longer. And uh, I, I would like to see, uh, see a thorough and transparent representation of the school board. Thank you. Okay, any questions for the school board candidates? Uh, Mr. We're counting on you. Who's going to be in first? Good evening. Uh, so, last, last session in the legislature, House Bill 193 uh, was defeated. It was a new thing. And for those of you not familiar with that particular bill, it were converted uh, funds into other alternative uh, educational uh, endeavors. Homeschooling and you know, Christian schools and you know, some of the like. I don't really have an opinion about the value of any of those other schools, but I do have an opinion about converting schools out of the public uh, school system. And that is uh, should be partnered into our, uh, as you say, our democracy, the public school system. So my question to you is this, how do you defend uh, that, uh, particularly your uh, defense of keeping private school funds for public schools, public school funding for public schools? You want to start on that one? So your, your question is, should we, we be using public school funds to finance private schools?
we do allow. We had public forums. Um, there was overwhelming support at those forums about having high school choice. It's what attracts a lot of people to our community, that opportunity. Um, when we went out for high school bids, um, Dover High could not accommodate all of our students, so we needed to find a second school of record so that we had seats for all of our students that they couldn't be. What happened several years ago in the town of Barnstead is they didn't have agreements, and suddenly they had students that no high school wanted, and so we needed to make sure that we had places for all our students to go. And so it was River, once we hit the cap, uh, became a second high school of record. So we do offer that choice. Students are allowed to attend Co Brown. Any any tuition that's above what's set at the other schools is on the parents' time. However, right now their tuition is slightly lower than Oyster Rivers. Carrie, you want to comment? I agree with I agree with Nora, and I do think that although I'm happy that parents have more choice in charter schools and private schools than before, I think that's an important option for parents to remain open, but I do believe that um, public school funds should remain in public schools for all the reasons that Mara listed. Um, and I think that when you think about it from a 30,000 foot level, you think about just because I don't use certain things in the town doesn't mean that as a, as a community member, you're part of the town, it means that, sure, there may be things that I pay for taxes that I won't ever use, but my neighbors will people who I never meet will. And to me, that has a lot of value because I'm part of a community. And so, hopefully that answers your question. Thanks, Kennedy. Any other questions for candidates for the school? I, I wanted to elaborate on our comment, please. Uh, public school funds are not public until the residents, the property owners of that town pay those funds public treasure and many times uh, there are uh, families that have children that might like or want to like to go outside the public school and if they do uh, other than Cole Brown they would have to pay uh, the burden of the local school public school as well as sending them to the any private school while those parents are paying, in my opinion, they're being, if they don't have a choice, if their money, their, their tax is being held uh, to the public school and they are further burdened because they want us to go out to a private school. And, uh, I, I, so public funds are not public until the taxpayers who are in custody of that uh, funds set and give to the public credit. Okay, any other questions or comments? Okay, moving on to trustee of the trust funds. Now I have to confess, I worked with Stephanie into this quite a few years ago. So I have a little thought that they're going to be very nice to her. <laughs> Any questions relative to trustee of the trust funds?
and, and if I might add, as a treasurer, I don't know if you know, but I'm a treasurer of the town, um, it really requires a good working relationship between the trustees and the town. And I think uh, we've had that for quite a few years now, and we're blessed to have that. Um, there are a lot of places where uh, life can be very difficult. Similarly with the school, I think the town, uh, when I was, I don't think it was my fault, but when I was on the board, select board, uh, relations were not that great with the school. Uh, that was 20 years ago. But um, again, uh, having good relationships with, uh, with the school, with the trustee of the trust funds, with uh, other institutions, we have to work is really essential that we try to be you know too uh, isolated and too independent it really caused a lot of pain so uh, sorry to add to what Stephanie had to say but it's a couple of million dollars in the capital reserves and other funds that the trustees take care of and uh, I think we're very fortunate to have them do the job they do so sorry to editorialize I know I should be moderator but I couldn't help but say that. <laughs> Thank you. Any questions, other questions for Stephanie? <laughs> yes, sir. Jack Hill, Barry River Road. Um, recently, the select board presented a plan that's going to be at the town hall. And part of that plan, creating financing, and being at the best way, uh, to allocate roughly a little more of a million dollars to help fund that town hall. I assume that the funds so how do we come about deciding what do we give into the piggy bank versus that very pocket? Do you want me to answer that? I was going to say it's a multifaceted answer. I mean, it, the select board is actually agents of the funds, so when we create the funds, they, or likewise the school board, are also agents of the funds. So they do have a say in how things are spent. Um, as a safety, that's why you have a separate group of trustees. We make sure that the money is being allocated appropriately. Um, so, you know, every year we go to a, um, a, a kind of a convention type thing. We learn all about laws and what we can and can't do. But it's really interesting to hear some of the other towns and some of the issues that have actually been brought up where money, you know, the trustees have thought has been misallocated. So they kind of have to break some things. But I don't know if you want to elaborate any more. Maybe you the, the money we propose in this particular instance is from the general fund. Um, it's not from one of the uh, capital reserves. So that um, it's a matter of we have a fair amount of surplus. And uh, so it would simply be reducing what's called the unreserved fund balance. And um, so it wouldn't affect anything that uh, the trustee of the trust funds have responsibility for. This is money that is currently in our check. Thank you. May I also add to that um, when you look at the unreserved fund balance, there's usually a target rate that we try to stay between uh, on the low end of the year, like 10 to 12 percent, and the upper end is around 17. Uh, we're, we're at that upper end plus. Uh, so looking at how do we best utilize it, well, this is a way to get us out of a rented building without creating any additional tax impacts to any of our residents and utilize uh, funds that we have available that we can do a one-time offset from a tax rate standpoint, but you would end up, when you see if you do something like that, you create a massive dip and then a spike in your tax rate, which creates an instability in your system, which really makes people nervous. So the goal is not to to, to how do we meet the needs of the town without creating those peaks and valleys and spikes in and out of your tax rate? And one comment. One thing, I work every day. And I work all for a thousand dollars. And so oh, that's why I read earlier. We have three big things we're looking at. Library, police station, and town hall. How can we bring this forth and not have a huge impact on the taxpayers. So by doing this, we're not going against the library. We're bringing some forth, but level funded pretty much offset the rent. 
So you won't think we're going against each other, we're not. We do this on purpose and stuff. So we can all three things on the table and not nail it taxpayer. Thank you. Any other questions or comments? Yes, sir. Thank you. 
feel that's really the sound rolling is up. It's all rolled. You can break it up. You're, you're our representative. You can break it up. My views on that are material for this discussion. I would ask for your views on that.
right? It wouldn't authorize another land transaction until we start doing some of that and have started building parking areas to use some of that land, which is exactly what I've asked him to do and do in a way that is respectful of the town. And I think it's an important part of our town's character. So having good conservation land, um, I find to be very important. As for um, the purchase of swampland, I can't speak to anything that was done before I was here, but I can tell you we've had land that has been donated and land that has been purchased using very little of the town money to do that, um, but also while protecting the watershed in this process. Uh, first of all, I thought I'm not really going to bring this up, but I have a If you look at the town as a whole, it's probably 40% of it's protected with the buffers, shoreline protection, and all this stuff. And yes, we have a, the urban barrage and the ways. We have a lot of uh, nice features we have protected stuff. And the money that is, you know, they will start out with 25%, now it's 75%. Once this, once the, um, we get these lands that some sell support and stuff, and useful for the public, then maybe that money can direct somewhere else, but that's got a town vote where that money goes. It's not up to us. And this, the, the last three years, this board has formed another committee, advisory town land committee, to look at all these resources we have, all this land, what we can do with it, so they give us feedback. And we look, look at the positive side of it.
wouldn't that kind of engage the purpose of like getting that kind of money if you have to add additional enforcement to you know like make sure that our citizens are safe? If there's an issue with it, we, we can deal with it. And then if, if it, there's a certain business, whatever, as a repeat business, we, we can stop that. Yeah, yeah, I'm just not, I, I just have concerns that we'd be spending money on, you know, additional police enforcement and we wouldn't necessarily, you know, be recouping that for our... We're not going to be spending any money, that's a job. We're going to be right side of the door. We have a police force. But if there's an issue that's a lot of stuff, we can have it anywhere outside. We can have papers hanging out here every night at school. So then, so we do the address, we don't know. But we have a full-time police force. Yes, okay. okay. Anything else? Anything from the candidate? Yes, sir. Notepad, that was well, now I was making notes here because um, the uh, gentleman right in front here had asked the question or made a general statement, I guess, is um, a combination of questions why don't people come out for this? I'm, I guess I'll stop short of saying pathetic, but um, I'll let it out there anyway to see if this is the output they're trying to give me. Be close to the mic. Um, I think a lot of it is driven by the fact that people have families. I know my wife is, spends a lot of nights at home that I'm not there with my three-year-old and the last three years from when he was born to now. Because I, I was actually running for this position when he was born. I came to this very forum and I had brought my wife home from the hospital from having our son. Um, so people have families. And I don't know about you guys, but I'm pretty committed to my family. And I think everybody here is committed giving up that time with their family is a challenge. People have careers that they're working on, whether they're day shift, night shift, whatever shift it is. Um, we are a working class community, we're a bedroom community in a lot of regard. Uh, and I guess kind of on the positive side, I think people think we're doing a good job. They might not always agree, but in general, I think we do a pretty good job with managing the town from a school end, from a municipal end. Uh, and the benefit is there. If you look at Barrington compared to the surrounding towns around us, we have the lowest tax rate of all of them. And people want to live here because of it. And it's reflecting in the value of the houses in our community. We have uh, good environmental lands. We have a trail system. We have 20% of the town in conservation. We have a very active and engaged library. We offer the soiree, the tree lighting ceremony every year. Um, we're coming up on the tricentennial of the town. Um, we're working toward having a municipally owned town hall. Um, we have the benefits of three school options for high school choice. And we're doing everything we can to maintain a low tax rate by making sure that we're offering a great value to the town's folks. And, um, doing it all while maintaining or reducing expenses to keep that repair. And I think we all get probably a lot of flack for a lot of what we're doing, but we're all doing it in the best interest of Barrington in mind, and we're sacrificing our time with our families and friends and community to do what's in the best interest of this and of the community we live in. So, so why are there not a lot of people here? That's why I think there aren't a lot of people positive or negative, however you take it, I, that's, my, that's my take on it. I'll continue to be here. Thank you. Thank you all for coming. <laughs> Any other questions or comments? Okay, if you none, I want to thank our candidates for office. And as others have expressed, I want to thank you for your participation in what we do. And uh, thank you folks for being here. I think given the small number, we had good questions and uh, good discussion, so I appreciate that. And I hope a number of people will see this on tape. So thank you for your time.